At this moment, negotiators are pushing forward on the terms of a potential ceasefire in Gaza. The talks coincide with the Israeli military launching additional airstrikes in the densely populated southern city of Rafah. CBS News' Deborah Pata spoke with a Hamas commander in the Israeli-occupied West Bank about the group's mindset and its expectations following the October 7th attacks. On October the 7th, women and children were murdered. We see death every single day. Israel lost what? 1,000 or 2,000 people killed. That's nothing. But it doesn't make it right to kill women and children. This is my land, my land. So it's only normal that we take it back by force. Nor is there remorse for the more than 28,000 Palestinians killed in Israel's bombardment of Gaza. You had to have known that that would have been Israel's response, that Palestinians would suffer as a result. Uh, we are not pleased with that, but this is the path of the armed struggle. CBS News senior foreign correspondent Holly Williams is in Tel Aviv. Holly, I mean, there's a lot to unpack from that interview, but let's just start off with the big question, where we stand on ceasefire discussions. Hey, Lana and Errol. Well, it certainly looks as if the ceasefire negotiations are not going anywhere very quickly. Um, the U.S. is trying to broker a deal along with Egypt and Qatar. Those delegations from those three nations met in Cairo, Egypt, yesterday, uh, along with uh, a delegation from Israel. The U.S. delegation was led by CIA Director William Burns. They apparently had no breakthrough, although reportedly the negotiations are continuing, although with officials at a, at a lower level. Level. That certainly doesn't sound very optimistic. Now, the idea would be a ceasefire, presumably for a limited amount of time, during which there would be an exchange of the remaining hostages being held in the Gaza Strip. It's thought there are around 130 of them in return for Palestinian prisoners. Now, if you remember back in November, that's what we saw then. There was a ceasefire for around a week, during which time 105 hostages were released from Gaza in return for 240 Palestinian prisoners. But this time around, Hamas reportedly wants thousands of Palestinian prisoners released in return for those remaining hostages, as well as a total withdrawal of Israeli forces from the Gaza Strip. Now, that is not something that Israel is likely to agree to. And in fact, Israel's Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, dismissed Hamas's proposal as, quote, delusional. We should note that Benjamin Netanyahu is under enormous pressure domestically here in Israel. On the one hand, hostage families and their supporters are putting pressure on him to get those hostages out as soon as possible. There are mounting calls for Netanyahu to resign, but he's also under pressure from the right, from politicians further to the right than he he is, who are, who are telling him that he shouldn't concede too much to Hamas. And caught in the middle of all of this, Holly, are civilians on both sides of the conflict. And we know that during the most previous ceasefire, people in Gaza were urged to move south and get to the border crossing with Egypt. But now we know there's an expected Israeli operation in Rafah, in that same area. What do we know about that possibility? Well, look, well, Israel says that it has to go into Rafah to secure a complete victory over Hamas. Destroying Hamas was the, the entire point of this war. And Israel says that there are Hamas fighters hiding inside Rafah. But also in Rafah are around one and a half million people, Palestinians, many living in refugee camps. So that city is right on the border of the Gaza Strip with Egypt. Before the war, its population was around 250,000. So there's been a seven or eightfold increase. Many of those people are living in tents and conditions are dire. Israel is facing really fierce criticism over its plans to extend its operation into Rafah. The United Nations warned that if Israel goes into Rafah, uh, it could lead to a slaughter uh, and that the consequences could be catastrophic. In fact, a spokesman for the UN Secretary General said that the UN will not be party to any forced displacement of people. Even the US, you know, Israel's most important, most powerful ally, and usually a staunch ally, um, is saying that it will not back a ground operation without a credible plan for protecting civilians. So I guess the question at this point is whether um, Israel will, will heed those criticisms, will yield to those criticisms, or will push ahead with its plans regardless. All right. Holly Williams, thank you.